What up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with more One Piece. Today we're doing episodes 377 through 380. We're officially nearing the end of Thriller Bark. I am super excited, but also insanely nervous with how last episode ended. Remember, if you guys want early access up to 16 episodes, as well as the full uncut versions of these episodes, check out the Patreon down below. Come on over to the Twitch as well, twitch.tv slash Darius. We watch this all the time live, vibing with chat. It's always such a great time. And if you guys don't mind, follow me on all my social medias, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all at Dapper Darius. I'm not going to waste any more time. One Piece, episode 377 versus Shock. Let's do it. All right. This is episode 377, right where we left off. God damn. Bro, literally used the spirit bomb. Like, hey. You're in the wrong show, buddy. Go to the other show, buddy. Man used almighty push. You're in the wrong show, buddy. Go to the other show, buddy. If Gecko Moria was still alive then, because they were like, hey, we can have him keep his position. I don't, I like, is he still alive after that? Imagine someone taking a little week vacation from Thriller Bark coming back. Like, well, hey, I'm back, boss. My vacation was fun. What the f happened here? He's legitimately the last one standing. I don't see a single other character. Oh, this is a story of how Kuma becomes king of the pirates. Now we follow him. I see, I see, I see. Oh! Zoro will not give up no matter what happens. Oh my god, that was a great attack. Shout out to Lion Strike. Stronger than temp. Man's Android fucking 22 over here. Again, you're in the wrong show, buddy. Great dodge. Does that look. That looks like it could have ended us. After everything that's happened, I gotta give huge respect. Mad shout out to Zoro for still fighting. Immediately trying to save his captain. Oh my god. Although an accurate description, he's nothing like Frankie. Do you mind giving me more details? I would love them. So he definitely has some robotics built into his, his body. Pacifista? Pacifista. Love this shot right now. Incomplete human weapon? Did they make him? Was he an already pirate and then they just manipulated his body on some General Grievous shit? This is not the first time they mentioned Dr. Vegapunk. Uh, Kobe mentioned him. When it comes to like devil fruit powers and shit. Oh, hell no. Dr. Vegapunk. Like there's no, nothing I can give you. That's the most you like. We can't. I'll give you some random boy over there's head. We'll paint it, look like Luffy, put a little straw hat on him. Wow. I got goosebumps right now. Zoro is the realest one of the gang right now. He's legit willing to die for my man Luffy. Wow. He makes a fair point. He says that with such certainty and such determination. The music playing in the background right now. Bro, I got goosebumps. It's not just him. Like, I love Zoro to death. I'm so glad we have some assistance in this. Don't tell me Sanji's gonna... Bro. This... I love that answer. This is one of the main reasons the Straw Hats are so amazing. They're literally willing to die for each other. And he's so fearful because it could literally happen at any moment. That's how you know he's being dead-ass serious about this. Ain't no cap in his rap. No siree. That is... That is not happening. 
This gives me like end game vibes when Black Widow and uh, Hawkeye are fighting for who's going to sacrifice themselves. It's like you don't want him to die. He doesn't want you to die. I did the job too. Zoro's really going to do it. I'm begging you. Wow. After what his subordinates are willing to go through, he would bring shame to yourself. He's not gonna... He said, I'm not going to bring him harm. I'm a man of my word, but I'll show you hell. That's possible? He repelled the fatigue and pain. This is just a small taste. That was literally a fucking little piece of the amount of pain and suffering Luffy went through in his fight with- What? Is this gonna be like a test? Is he really gonna take all that pain and suffering? And fatigue? Nah, Zoro's the undisputed goat of the Straw Hats if he does this. Oh my goodness. I got goosebumps of fucking Gen. Are we not going to see him? We're just going to see the aftermath? Is I'm praying my man is okay. And because everyone is knocked out, the only one that even knows anything about this is going to be Sanji. All the pain and fatigue Luffy had is now repelled out of his body. It's all gone. He's gonna wake up, he's like, is Zoro dead? Did he take his head? Even see, that's not a good sign at all. Bro, how is Thriller Bark gonna go from the funniest, some of the most lighthearted moments in all of One Piece, to easily the most distressing, and one of the darkest moments of One Piece? Oh my god. Oh my god! The amount of blood splattered everywhere? Nah. Nah. Nah, Zoro's my favorite in the Straw Hats now. There's just no way. There's absolutely no way. No preview for me, bro. What the hell? Alright, this is... This is the next episode. I am still shook from last episode. That is sick. Absalom can make an entire ship disappear. So we will eventually see Absalom. I assume Perona. That's a cool design ship for the Bark too. And, and Hogback again. But nah, when we catch Dr. Vegapunk, it's on sight. And they even have Gecko Moria here. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's the outcome of that battle? Oh, no. Ace is an impel down? Oh, this is getting crazy. One day after defeating Moria. I think that's the realest part about it is he's not telling him. Because he knows how bad it would make Luffy feel. It's a mystery where all that energy came from. All the pain and fatigue got let one somewhere.
Nami is realizing this is the actual Lola. That's hilarious. The, sh the shadow has... Oh, wow. The shadow has a certain aspects of it that comes back to you. <laughs> Nami's like, we're BFFs. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Lola was one of the goats. That's how crazy of an occasion this is. We shouldn't let our savior work. Yeah, where is that W man? Oh my lord. Never seen Zoro so badly hurt. Only you knew. Like, I respect Zoro wholeheartedly for what he did, but I respect him even ten times more because he's not going to say what happened, you know? Nothing happened. Yeah, Sanji doesn't... And he respects Zoro's decision. Like, there's a lot Sanji and Zoro disagree on, but they have such a respect for each other. Sanji really doesn't even know the full details. Zoro wouldn't tell him either. Nothing happened. That... The fact that he's able to do that is so insane. He can repel the fatigue and pain. It was a bubble of agony. That's a great way to put it. That's what I'm saying. He's, he's doing it so Luffy... Luffy does not feel bad at all about this. Real recognize real. And Sanji and Zoro looking real familiar right now. Is that Robin who heard? Oh, so she knows as well. She's also going to respect Zoro's wishes, obviously. She's a good person. Nothing. We forgot. We we're actually mistaken. As Sanji's theme is playing in the background. They had to give his swaggy cool answer as they walk away. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Shout out those two guys. Nah, I don't know how people can hate on Thriller Bark. This has been a fantastic arc so far. Yo! Right? Even though I don't have lips. I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get, catch on to you, Brooke. I'm starting to catch on to you. <laughs> no, that is hilarious. That is hilarious. Wow. Oh, that boy Frankie shaking that ass. Super. The post arc parties are always the best time, I always say. Isn't this the song they play in the show? And we got Brooke playing it right now? I love how meta that is. So Brooke and Robin knows. No, it was very compassionate and very, very good hearted of you. You bore the same resolve. You were willing to go through with it. My first time getting to hear a full music piece from Brooke. Now, I always say the post arc parties are my favorite, but with Brooke, they're going to be three times better now. Got some great music, great food. This. It's so crazy how we can have such a duality. Yes, one of the most heart-wrenching, most depressing moments of all of One Piece, right into one of the happiest, greatest moments of One Piece, you know? Oh, did they? Shout out Shanks and the rest of the gang. Shout out the Red Hair Pirates. All the pirates have seen this. That's a crazy looking ship right there. 
Shout out Binx's booze, man. Are we gonna tell him we know Laboon? I would love to go see Laboon and Crocus. That makes you a real one. <laughs> I would love to see that reunion myself. I know he feels so bad. Oh, that's especially after worrying for 50 years and wanting but not being able to leave the, the, the shadows, you know, like that is such an emotional weight off his shoulders, such an emotional gut punch, you know, I respect that. I love that. And like. In real life, too, whales are one of the most social creatures in the world, you know? Like... Wow. Look at human brook. Oh, This is how they first met. Damn, the whole brook's pirates got the whole... Whole band playing it. I love how they animate the background. Music can really be so joyful, so cheerful to people, you know? Aww. Aww. God damn this show. Gets me emotional, man, I tell you. Gets me emotional. Alright, this is the next episode, 379. Rumbar Pirates, Musician and Swordsman. Look how happier he looks. Yeah, he lost his friends and family, man. He is. He's adorable. A panda pirates? Laboon probably gonna help him out. He wasn't just a member of the gang that would just follow us around. A literal lifesaver. Damn, he's been sailing with him for a minute through the winter, through the wintry storms. I guess we are on the Grand Line, so any kind of weather could happen at any time, you know? Oh, hell no. We gotta save that boy. I love that. Shout out the Rumbar Pirates. It does hit even just that much more, you know, seeing how they met, how they looked out for each other, how they grew to be best friends. And he didn't see him for 50 years, man. Well, they got to leave him behind. That, that sucks, man. Yeah, they want to do it for his own good, you know? That's why they left him at the coast of uh, Reverse Mountain. Oh, he is still such a... He's still such a baby, so... I mean, I get it. That just sucks, man. They're the only family he has, you know? I mean... And it's sad, but... Realistically, if Laboon went with them and everything that happened in Thriller Bark happened, you know, Laboon might not be alive right now, you know? Man, this is this is sad. They make his little whale cries too too cute too, man. Are they all just avoiding him? Just hiding over hiding on deck. Such lovers, such innocent creatures, you know. That's so sad. 
I'm hoping we do get that reunion between Brooke and him. I went through the whole ordeal. I mean, we know Laboon is on the other side, so did he follow them sneakily, or how did this happen, you know? It's quite the adventure, you know? Look at a young Crocus. You did follow them. That is... Oh, I feel so bad. He even took a little bit of a beating on the way over as well. Brooke is just happy. It just still blows my mind how a, a whale we met literally 300 episodes ago is so pivotal to the story and such like a has such a great backstory, you know. Is this where he makes him the promise? This is where they make the promise. They're gonna do a full loop around the world, come back up, and right back to the to this cape. Damn. But I've only known Yorkie for half an episode, but he doesn't seem like a bad guy at all, you know? He seems like a, a, a good captain and a, a good guy. I mean, and I have to assume he's dead along with the other rum bar pirates, so like, I gotta throw an RIP to Yorkie, man. Such great music. That's one thing that's so synonymous with the big three. Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, all have fantastic music. Look at him with that gleam in his eyes. So hopeful. That's how the main duo of Crocus and Laboon started. After he said two or three years. And the, so it took him a few years just to get to the Florian Triangle. Are we going to get to see them and how they perished? They already all died. It took him like a year, right, to find something like that, his soul to find his body again. God damn. God damn. All right, this is the last episode of the session. This is 380. We're still hanging out with skeletonized brook in the florian triangle three years after they departed from laboon he collecting all of his uh wow he did he collected all of his crewmates skeletal heads at least and put them together i mean without being used to you being a skeleton just walk and seeing a skeleton would definitely freak you out you know Plague. Little garden? I mean, it did take Kureha and Chopper, two of the best doctors we've ever met, to be able to fix them. Damn, man. I was not expecting a plague. I assume it's the one from Little Garden, the one to beat the one taking Yorkie out, or at least taking him out of the fight. Oh. That's hard to hear from your captain. Like I said, I only know Yorkie for like an episode and a half, but he's a he's a good captain. With the the love and care of his crewmates, you know. Ten years after leaving Twin Cape, damn, ten years. He's still just wandering the Florian Triangle. 
Damn, man. I can't imagine being alone for that many years. I'd be sleeping like I don't know what I would do. He's even having dreams of his comrades. That's a clean transition to old Brook. That would take a toll on your mental, man. Isolation by itself is pretty bad, but... Oh, that's actually sad. That is actually sad. Hope he did. And Brooke ended up getting a bounty. He's like the surrogate captain. They went to many islands together. Such a difference from then till here, you know. We got a conch shell in there. Well, a tone dial. Shout out Skypea. That's nice. I don't know if he could access the inside of his head, though. Yes, you do, Brooke. Wow. That's sad, but still very happy. I'm glad he still has some... some lasting memory of them. Especially for Laboon to hear it, yeah. This is the direct aftermath. They lace their weapons with poison. And they've lost their doctor. He says not seeing Laboon. Aww. Is this... Is this what they were saying in their final moments? Are they going to talk about... Like if Brooke gets to carry on, go see Laboon for us? So that's why he was so set on that promise you know coral number of a lifetime even in their final moments man thinking of that amazing whale shout out the rumbar pirates man way to go out like some men Thinking of that boy Laboon. I love how they actually put the lyrics on there. People to sing along, man. That was real. That was real touching, man. I respect them like crazy. I do hope they get to play that for Laboon. Look at the gang all dancing. Yo ho ho ho. Glad I had my tissues on deck. Her men are literally dying, man. Their last words. They're going out for that man, Laboon. One good ass whale, man. Damn, man. God damn it, man. What I see, no Kaizo no easy art. So my toa Yakso Kodori. So men cut a psychai stay. Such a beautiful, such a beautiful episode. Ah, oh, goodness gracious, man. Well, those episodes were uh, really good. It really hit the heart, you know, especially like having it be a few episodes long that backstory and seeing not only Yorkie but the rest of the Rumbar pirates and how much they cared about that goddamn whale, you know? Ooh. All right, be them. I'm glad Brooke was able to 
live on and carry on their will in their final song which made it like talk about a manly but try to make it a happy way to go out you know Ooh, that is sad rfp them i'm glad and i'm hoping we get to go see laboon one day because that's going to be a reunion that i'm gonna love but oof. good episodes good episodes good episodes oh, remember to check out that patreon full length early access come over to the twitch got chat crying with me right now don't forget to drink some water tell someone you love them have a great day after squad <laughs>